Hello, everybody, and welcome to the show after the show. This is Fox 10 Talks, where we dig into the most interesting stories of the day, and everybody seems to be talking about the bat swarm uh, here in the valley. Is it a bat cave? Is it a bat tunnel? Uh, what is it? Where is it? And uh, why does it exist? And why did we see so many bats the other night? We are going to get all the answers as we talk to literally the state's expert on bats. So uh, good morning. We're glad you're with us. Also, uh, this storm is a massive Category 5 hurricane that is sweeping across the Caribbean where does it look like it's headed? We have some of the newest projections. A couple of more stories coming your way. Should clear be banned at the airport? You know, when you show up there, they got boarding, general boarding, and then TSA pre-check, and then clear. Should it be banned? There's apparently been a move underway. And speaking of airports, what happened to the lady who called in sick to work and then ran into her boss at the airport? It actually happened as she posted about it. It's all coming your way. But right now, we are going to talk to uh, none other than Angie McIntyre, who is the state bat expert. She is uh, with Arizona Game and Fish. Angie, we really appreciate a few minutes of your time. Um, tell, I'm, I'm actually showing our viewers this bat swarm that was so large, it showed up on radar uh, on Sunday here in the Valley. Um, how unusual was that? Yeah, good morning, and yeah, thanks for having me. Um, you know, it's it's not unusual at all. We have a number of large colonies of Mexican free-tail bats that, and especially at this time of year, the females have just had their babies, and so um, so what was witnessed there was just all of the females taking off to go feed for the night okay now and this is is this a particularly um i guess i could use the word popular <laughs> i mean at least among among the bat population is this a particularly popular spot for them um and where is it well that's a good question and actually so i've literally been in a bat cave for about the last 24 hours up near Kingman and so I don't want to get the location wrong because I haven't seen the, the story okay <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, well I've seen some reports it's in the area matter of fact let me pull up a live camera here I've seen some reports this is somewhat generic but um, that it's in the mountain area, kind of between uh, Piestawa Peak and Camelback. Uh, those okay. mountains that are kind of north of that area. If you, if you got to 40th Street and Camelback and headed north from there, it's apparently mm -hmm. up, in those, uh, up in those mountains, some sort of a uh, cave or tunnel that is okay. the normal bat behavior to uh, kind of return to the same place every year when they're on their migration pattern? Yes, it sure is. Um, bats have a really high uh, fidelity to their homes and come back every year to the same location. You know, around the same time of year, they leave when they, you know, migrate to their winter grounds, they leave around the same time. So there's kind of a, a pattern of their behavior. And there is a tunnel, a popular tunnel at 40th and Camelback area with a, a really nice size population of, of free tail bats. So whether this was an additional location that's not necessarily on my radar um, or whether, you know, the radar picked up some the, the bats from this, this nearby tunnel um, is hard to say. So um, give us... Give us just a little bit of a view of, um, I've done a little bit of digging into this. I understand there are other places uh, here in the country where they have uh, huge bat populations around Austin, Texas, for example. They, uh, some of the uh, research I read said there are more than a million bats that call that area home. Are, do these bats call the, this Phoenix metro area home or are they in the middle of their migration pattern and maybe actually coming from somewhere else 
Yeah, that's great. A great question. Um, this is their home. So the bats that are here now, because the females, so these large congregations, when you hear about Austin, Texas, and millions, that is always a group of females of this Brazilian or Mexican free-tailed bat species. They're the ones that congregate in these huge numbers. And, um, and so right now they're giving birth, like I mentioned, or they've just had their young, so they are home. Now, they're, they also make their home north of here. Um, like I mentioned, I was literally just in a bat cave near Kingman, um, and that was also this species and that this is their home, um, uh, you know, a site that they've found that they really like. They're familiar with the hunting grounds nearby. And, um, yeah, this is their home. Okay, so um, they, just so we can kind of understand their behavior, uh, they hang out inside that cave all night. I guess, or all, really more okay. all day to avoid the heat. And then um, they really emerge uh, right around sunset, and they're, they're just all heading out looking for food. Is that it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they stay there all day. Um, their young stay, you know, behind. They leave around sunset, sometimes a little bit earlier. Last night, the site that I was at, the bats left about a half hour or so before it got dark there were so many bats they have to kind of funnel out in an orderly fashion because there were so many to get out of this uh, cave that I was at um, same thing at the tunnel and then they go and they di they divide up into smaller groups so they don't hunt all as one huge colony but they splinter off into groups of probably 25 30 um, you know, uh, some more, some less, and, and then they hunt together. And they also fly at really high altitudes. There's so much that we don't know about what they do. Uh, we do know that they're the fastest flying mammal. Um, these guys have been clocked at speeds up to 99 miles per hour. Wow. <laughs> they're like little jet airplanes, this particular <laughs> species. They've yeah. got really narrow wings. And, um, and then they hunt on the wing. So they're catching things in mid-flight, sometimes at, like I said, incredible altitudes where there are swarming insects that, that scientists are kind of just beginning to learn about, you know, some of that sort of thing that occurs at such high altitudes. When you see a swarm uh, like the one that was caught on radar, and it is so massive. I mean, literally, it's stretching for miles. Is it anything that humans should be concerned about at all? Uh, no. I mean, when a bat is acting normal and doing its normal thing, flying out, going to get food, um, hunting, it's, it's, they truly have no interest in us. They're on their own mission. Um, and they, bats never attack people. Um, you know, they get a bad rap because, like any mammal, bats can contract rabies. Almost always a bat with rabies is one that is found on the ground. It's why we have kind of this, you know, sense that they're – because humans are more likely to encounter a bat that is in, um, in that situation sure. than the ones that – the millions that are literally flying around that we never encounter – um, but they, but bats don't attack people, and they do such a great service for in, our environment. Eat so many tons of insects, um, and they're just really—they're so fascinating. Yeah. I have been studying them for a long time, and I never get tired of seeing an emergence. Um, it's such a peaceful, beautiful experience, um, and they're just really cool. Animals. Well, that was going to be my last question. What's it like to spend 24 hours in a cave with thousands of bats like you just did? Yeah. Yeah. And I wasn't, I was like right on the outside because um, uh -huh. we didn't want to disturb them. Yeah. The bats all flew out. It was so incredible. And then it's such a remote spot that we spent the night and we got to see the bats fly back in the morning. It's just, it's, I, I can't even describe. It's so, it's just so amazing. 
Well, this interview <laughs> may have prompted a few young people watching or listening to say, hey, maybe that maybe I can become a bat biologist because you do make it sound really interesting, Angie. We oh, appreciate it's fun. You. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And I hope, yeah, kids, kids will study bats because they're just endlessly fascinating. There she is, the state's bat specialist with Game and Fish, Angie McIntyre. Angie, thanks for your time. Yeah, thank you. Have a great day. And now we welcome Celeste to the microphone. Hello, Celeste. Hi, Ron. Nice to have you back here on a Tuesday. How interesting was that oh, interview? Oh, that was fascinating. <gasps> I think people all around the world are waking up to this story today and saying, man, that is amazing. Particularly because some of these pictures, I mean, the bat swarm that was caught on radar and these images from Game and Fish, I mean, you could tell she loves what she does. Uh, and I guess the bottom line is we shouldn't fear them. You know, they're in their natural habitat, and they come flying out of that bat cave right around Sunset, 40th Street, north of Camelback. I think their brand was hijacked at some point because they were put in these <laughs> horror movies, and now right? everybody is scared of them. Yeah. But they actually are really important in her interview. This is the part that was really interesting. They're such an important part of our ecosystem. Yes. And it's important that they migrate, and right. it's important that they survive. And they catch the bugs with their wings. Yes. I thought that was really interesting. Wow. Too. Um, the closest I ever came to a bat was many years ago doing a story uh, in the Grand Canyon. Okay. And it, they this is pre cell phone. I don't even know if they have cell service there today, but they had a, a, a like an outdoor phone booth. So I'd been on the river for three days. I thought I'm going to call my family, make sure. Let them know I'm alive. Know I'm still alive <laughs> in the bottom of the Grand Canyon. And a bat flew right by my head. Oh my goodness. How big was it? Uh, it was such a kind of a. Uh, Maybe like the size of a bird or a pigeon or it something. It seemed larger than a bird. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah. So, um, yeah, we should not fear them. We should respect them, especially if they're down on the ground. When it was swinging by your face, it was like da na 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 na. Oh yeah. Batman. Oh my whole Bat life, <laughs> my whole life flashed right before my eyes. It happened so fast. I'm like. Whoop. Oh, what that was that? a bat. Um, anyway, Celeste, good to have you here. Let's talk just a little bit about this storm that is the it is the worst earliest storm that we have ever seen uh, in our nation's history wow. and you see the eye of that storm as it churns across we're talking of course about hurricane barrel and uh it is roaring through the caribbean it was monday night last night that it hit cat five earlier in the day it was cat three i mean it really grew and um, 160 mile an hour winds and a lot of damage being done. In fact, I think we've got some pictures of that as well. Wow. Uh, in Barbados and in Grenada, particularly in Grenada uh, is the spot I think that they have just been seeing just massive it's amounts just of awful. destruction. And as it heads toward Jamaica, uh, you know, and so I don't know. If, I've never been to the Caribbean and, and spent any time, but I know there are people who love to go down to those islands. You take a look at the flooding here uh, that happened. They're really worried about a storm surge once it hits Jamaica which they think will be within 48 hours. Yeah, a lot of times when you take a look at these storms, the eye of the storm, as you mentioned, Ron, is actually one of the safest spots to be mm -hmm. because that's not where you have the storm actively falling. Yeah. But then you're awaiting, of course, what's on the other side of that, which is, you know, that it's just an enormous storm that started out there and nothing to stop it and yeah. so that's why it's gained so much steam and it's grown so fast and they're saying the water just seems to be getting warmer every year there in the caribbean and so that just fuels these storms and that's probably why we have the earliest cat five in recorded history yes. beating the previous one by a full two weeks I mean, we are in hurricane season. We should expect uh, just about anything. But uh, the prime minister there in Grenada uh, saying that they did have one confirmed fatality and there may be others, but uh, the power is down. Uh, homes, there are some areas in some of the smaller islands where nearly all homes have been destroyed. And it's hard when you see some of these category, um, you know, three, four, five hurricanes hit some of the islands in this part right. of the world because yeah. it's hard for them to rebuild. Think of how hard it is for even families still affected by Sandy on the East Coast to rebuild. Oh, all these years later. All right, great point, Celeste. We have plenty more to come. We're going to take a break for our partners down the line, and you'll find out what happened to the lady 
who called in sick and then ran into her boss at the airport. <laughs> Don't go away. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at Oshkosh, by gosh, oh. in Wisconsin. And it looks like this is one of those weird phenomenons where you would expect the river to be flowing out into the lake, uh, the gigantic uh, lake there in uh, Oshkosh. But the way the wind is blowing, it looks like it's coming back ashore. Isn't that funny as you take a look at those live pictures? Thank you to Dean Fazzini. By the way, Celeste and I are also talking a little bit more mm -hmm. uh, just to kind of put a wrap on what's going on with the hurricane, with Hurricane Barrel. You've mm -hmm. been tracking the storm, and that was one of the things we wanted to let people know. Where is it really headed? Yeah, so it's, it's headed right through those islands and headed right into the Gulf. Okay. And if eventually hitting that eastern coastline of Mexico mm -hmm. where it connects with Texas. Yeah. So it could lose some steam, obviously, as it makes it in there. But the Gulf historically has very warm waters. And, of course, you have the war warm air that's kind of mm -hmm. covering and hovering on top. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's pretty scary stuff. This, this map is really phenomenal. Uh, Jeff Haggerty spotted that in our editing department and said, if you want to use it, this is the thing. You know, they have the cone of uncertainty mm -hmm. uh, because that it could come ashore, uh, you know, 100 miles south of, say, Brownsville, Texas. I yep. think that's that Brownsville, Harlingen area. Yes. Um, but, I mean, if it veers at all to the north, it, it will make landfall in Texas. And the thing is, you see that it p has the potential to uh, weaken. Uh, they think it'll be a three when it hits Jamaica, then a two and a one. So we sure hope that uh, no matter where it hits, from Mexico to the Texas Gulf Coast, that it has weakened substantially. The other thing about that map I find totally fascinating, here's the proof. When you go over to Cali and you're on the beach and you want to get in the water, it's always cold. There's yes. your proof. It's cold over there. It's plenty warm uh, if you're ever uh, in Florida or those beaches over there, just look at the temperature difference. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. But look at the wind speeds too, Ron, 165 miles per hour. We say, of course, that it's weakening, mm -hmm. but it's still crazy fast oh, still in terms crazy. of the wind All right. speeds. Going to be a big story all week long, but let us go to Sky Harbor Airport and ask the question, should clear be banned at airports? Politico broke this story today. It's fascinating. Uh, and they uh, talked with a state lawmaker who was behind a measure targeting airport security screening service clear. He did pull the bill yesterday, but there's been a controversy over it because the bill would have effectively banned clear at all California airports. Uh, unless they got their own dedicated security line, and that would involve federal approval uh, and would at least slow down the process, if not uh, basically. I mean, the, the practical effect was to try to uh, get them to not be at any more uh, California airports. So um, he said that uh, when he introduced the measure, travelers wouldn't, shouldn't have to suffer the indignity of someone pushing you out of the way to let the rich person pass you. What? Uh, okay. Now, I don't know how many of you rich people are out there shoving people out of the way. <laughs> but can you stop it, please? <laughs> just, just to get to the, uh, just to get to the clear machine. This sounds like an issue with capitalism. Does that lawmaker have an issue with capitalism? <laughs> it's possible. Because other, Celeste, otherwise, you're paying the what eighty-five dollars or whatever to TSA, right? Or however much yeah, money it costs. I think it's costs, more. Or I think global. it's a couple hundred dollars. Is it really two hundred? I, I don't remember. It's been several years yeah. but okay so you're either going to pay the, the federal government right for the tsa or you're going to pay clear which is a separate business yeah so so uh it, the bill did have the backing of labor unions again according to politico representing flight attendants and tsa agents but face very steep opposition from guess who clear the airlines <laughs> probably the clear people too but especially <laughs> the airlines uh and even the airport so very interesting, and what a quote. You don't, you shouldn't have to suffer the indignity of somebody pushing you out of the way to let the rich person pass. Watch your elbows, rich people. Okay, so uh, let's go on to, uh, could be, Celeste, one of my favorite stories so far today. Yes. Uh, there at Chipotle. Um, do you get what you pay for? This was your story oh. earlier this morning. Tell us a little bit this about it. I'm was. utterly fascinated. So there was a study done, yeah. and they looked at um, different locations. Yes. 
on Chipotle. 75 different ones, 75 I believe, different right? Locations. In the New York City area. Yes. In fact, were they all in Manhattan? They I were all in New York City. They were City. all in New York City. Yeah. And they ordered half of them online, half in person. Okay. And they were looking at whether or not they were um, ordered, like, in terms of, like, you know, were they the weight of the actual burrito bowl or yeah. burrito. Okay. You know, and they found that it differed greatly depending on the locations, yeah. you know? And so like if you went to a location in, in the Upper East Side, yeah. maybe they skimped on the product and right. didn't give you a lot of chicken or steak. To which when that happens, um, you wonder, well, was that just an employee not a, not doing his or her job? Or is the uh, franchisee or somebody saying, hey, we gotta cut back on that meat. Right. Or something along those lines. But it differed because if I went to the Lower East Side and oh, Chipotle there and okay. I ordered a burrito, yeah. maybe they gave me double the meat when I didn't ask for it well, and charged me the regular price. Yeah, so, you know, the interesting thing about it is that they, uh, as you say, they ordered 75 identical bowls from a bunch of different locations across the city and the heaviest ones weighed 87% more than the smallest ones. That's I, crazy. I would say go to that location. <laughs> yeah. And that's where we need to be going. Well, it was Wells Fargo and an analyst there. Uh, you know, Chipotle's been in the news a lot lately. And I think it's fascinating they decided to come up with that uh, as an option. Now, the problem, of course, is this. That we should have uniformity when you go through a drive through mm -hmm. or you go into a fast casual like that is, right? right? Um, Celeste, uh, the other day <laughs> I was at a McDonald's okay, and I made the following mistake. Uh, I like to get, a, as a breakfast sandwich, the sausage egg biscuit. Okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, just dotting my, dotting my I's and crossing my T's, I said, oh, to the squawk box, I said, and I'll take two mayos. And so, you're not going to believe this. I get up to the uh, uh, window, and I'm realizing the price is not the normal price because uh -oh. I, I get it at least once a week, and it's quite a bit more. They were they charged me twenty cents per packet of mayo. Are you kidding me? This is ridiculous. Was it best foods? Best Foods uh, no, Mayo? No, I don't know. I don't even think it was. Then the, that's a travesty. The high-flowing <laughs> brand. No, I think it was probably generic McDonald's or something. I don't know. But, I mean, 20 honestly. 20 cents? Yes. Now, already, don't get me started about Cane's charging for their sauce. You're going to have to start carrying sauce in your mouth. <laughs> yeah. That's a good solution, <laughs> Celeste. Uh, but anyway... I, I That's normally crazy. I just ask for it at the window when you know when I'm getting my and they'll just be like okay here you go yeah. but yeah if you order ahead of time so I'm just saying uh, most McDonald's don't do that thank goodness and that's being totally cheapskate. 20 cents per mayo pack so your tip because I think er most stories you have come with a parable you know yes. like a like a Correct. lesson at the yeah. end right. only ask at the window only ask at the window because <laughs> you also don't know if you're going to be at a mcdonald's where they're going to charge you for what should be a free small cup of water oh you run they into that do they of. charge you for water some places wow i don't know if it's mcdonald's or some of the other fast food but you got to watch crazy it. okay uh sonic now is making its own headlines and here's why they have entered the value menu wars celeste I love this. I do, too. This is incredible to me. And this is, uh, sorry, because I know a lot of people that work at McDonald's, you know, or go to <laughs> McDonald's. Certainly our family uh, helps keep them in business. But um, I, I don't mean to bag on McDonald's, but Sonic has its new Fun 99 menu. Dollar ninety nine items, including a quarter pounder. Wow, for a, a buck quarter for quarter pound double cheeseburger wow. is on their dollar ninety nine menu. Chili cheese coney hot dogs, dollar ninety nine. Sixteen ounce shakes, queso wraps. It's fantastic. And they have a great cherry limeade. They have do great they? limeades yeah. there. Very refreshing in the summer. Do you go? There's a certain time of day you can get them at half price. That's I'm sure right. You're aware. Happy hour. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right. Way to go, Sonic. That is uh, truly fantastic. Let's talk about the poor lady who, um, by oh, the way, all the faces is, are blurred out. Here. I think this is Delta, though, <laughs> don't you think? What is that other? Delta? Well, what planes uh, yeah. have the screen well, in the chair? I don't know. It might be Delta. <laughs> but anyway, this lady calls in sick, uh, and she shows up to the airport uh, because, in reality, she was getting ready to fly off somewhere. 
She goes on to TikTok, TikTok and says, you won't believe this. The clip was captioned, me taking a sick day only to end up <gasps> on the same plane as my manager. Oh, no. Yes. Uh, she says her boss called out her name uh, and then looked at her and said, oh, so this is the hospital? Oh, my She said goodness. they ended up laughing about it and chatting while they waited to board. Does she still have her job but, after returning? You know, that part is not included in the story. So, uh, I, I mean, it's possible. It's possible. There are some companies now. Yeah. One of them I know is here in town. Okay. And they allow you to use your sick days now. They've transformed them to personal yeah. days. Right. Because they know most of their employees use up all the sick days. Yeah, true. So they I mean, I had to use a sick day yesterday. Yeah, I know we I missed didn't you, like Ron. It. Yeah, I know. But I was nowhere near the airport, boss. <laughs> you can GPS me on that one. You are on a private jet. You don't <laughs> forget the airport. <laughs> well, anyway. Um, it's crazy, Yeah, though. let that be a lesson to uh, anybody who thinks they're going to take a... I'm trying to remember. There was a story uh, in this business of a guy, uh, I, I probably don't have time to tell the story, but he was notorious for taking a sick day. And finally oh, they really? figured out oh, there was it was happening during ski season oh, and he ended up skiing. Wow. So. He needs to move somewhere where you get Fridays off to ski, <laughs> like Utah. Four day work week. <laughs> Let's go to the mystery cam because we're almost out of time. Oh, Ooh, I like this wow. one, Celeste. Okay, so somewhere with a river uh, and uh, a little cliff on the other side of the river. Kind of looks like maybe a sort of a slow-moving town. Uh, not a big city, but I mean large enough that they've got some, you know, two, three, four, five-story buildings. So yesterday Dino gave us Arkansas. Oh, he did? So I'm going to guess somewhere. I was going to guess somewhere in, like, Arkansas. Okay. But I'm going to guess somewhere different. I'm okay. going to guess, like, um, somewhere in Mississippi, maybe? We've got a Mississippi. All right, Celeste, that's outstanding. <laughs> I look at this, and I think, where is it so hilly by a river yeah. like that? And I'm going to go West Virginia. Oh. You know, it, it doesn't get a lot of talk. But oh. here, let's uh, pull up the Celeste camera. Oh, you were and close. See. Kentucky. Oh, Kentucky. You Ashland, Kentucky. Yeah. Yeah, that's right over there by West Virginia. Ashland. I guess we sort of play it close here. <laughs> Celeste, we got to run. <laughs> it went by so fast today. Uh, but, yeah. We missed you yesterday, Ron. It's so great to have you back. Uh, it's a, oh, look, I just put the mystery cam up <laughs> over. <laughs> Who is today's guest host? <laughs> hey, Who we, is this strange woman? <laughs> yeah, we appreciate you guys watching, and we'll be back again tomorrow. Bye.